everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Wow, wow, wow. How are you all doing? It has been such a roller coaster in my world since I got back to Japan, uh, mostly from an emotional and spiritual perspective. Uh, and I'm here for all of it. I'm here for all the upgrades. I'm, I know that everything is an opportunity for me to f- step more fully into my power into my purpose, what is here on the timeline, into my alignment. And this is what I want to talk to you all about today is so many people can feel from a somatic level, from a body sensation level, that they are out of alignment. This usually happens in the form of getting sick, in the form of not feeling good in our body for whatever way And also this happens from an emotional level of, you know, negative beliefs and overthinking, insomnia, you know, like all of these things are symptoms of anxiety, all these things, all of these things are symptoms that something is out of alignment. And, um, you know, I give human design readings. The thing I love about human design is on their I really believe that human design is like this soul blueprint. So like we can become whatever we're meant to be in our timelines. And also human design, I feel like gives you like what your soul, like say before you came into the timeline, you're like, who do I want to be in this timeline in order to learn the lessons that I'm choosing to learn in this timeline? Okay, let's build my personality construct. Okay, what energy do I need? What, here's my... Here's my superpowers. Here are my opportunities for growth. All of this is energy moving through my body, and this is how I show up in the timeline. Well, this for me is what human design is. When you look at someone's chart, you can say, oh, this is your opportunities for growth. Here's your superpowers. Here's some things you really need to be aware of so that you understand how to navigate other people's energy. So it's like how to play your game and also how to play the game with other people because so many times we heal ourselves but then we don't give ourselves the tools on how to play the game with others because you can understand everything intellectually. You can heal yourself the best you can, babe. But if you don't know how to play with other people and what they need in each moment and how to hold the space for them, you're not going to get very far. You might just give up and not want to play with other people from an energetic or emotional level or, or, or relationship level. Because you're going to keep hitting these points if you don't have the tools. Like this is, this is what emotional maturity is. This is uh, understanding how to host someone in a conversation. Just basically like emotional intelligence. And all of these things sometimes can, all of these things. I just said two things that, don't, that contradict each other. I really believe that a lot of these things come down to a soul level of what y- tools you were given in the timeline. And a lot of this comes to your human design and knowing your human design of course you can ascend it and be whoever you want to be but it's nice to know where you're starting from so anyways just a little plug I do these if you want them in person or online reach out to me I'll give you all the details but the reason why I'm bringing this up is because in human design some little what do they call it Faraday's always talking about this um easter egg so like in the game these like secret things that they you can uncover uh, well, an Easter egg in human design. Wait, hold on. I just wanted to raise the camera a little bit. In in human design, one of the Easter eggs is that there's 700 life themes. Like, so, you know, if you look at someone's body chart on a human design, it shows you how the energy moves and, like, your personality construct and stuff. And then if you look at, like, their their life themes, it's like this is literally what your soul came to do in this timeline. So if you are accomplishing this thing then you know that you're here, you're here for all of it. My life theme is literally what they call the cross of alignment. So I'm here to look at you and see from intuitively from an energetic standpoint, usually I feel and also intellectually I can think, but it's for me, a lot of my psychic abilities come through feelings and um, just understanding how to read the energy in the room. And I can do this energetically with people. (laughs) I can do it emotionally, intellectually. I've learned those things. But the thing that comes in my body from a psychic level is feeling. So usually it happens intuitively first. And then I figure out intellectually and emotionally later how to explain all of it. Um, 
But this has really helped me in my life because I am here to bring connection. I'm here to bring alignment into someone's life. And if I'm hanging out with someone long enough, I can start seeing or feeling where they are out of alignment. And because I love helping people, I usually, uh, like with my friends, it usually happens in the form of like, you know, gentle coaching. Uh, I also offer coaching sessions because I have just done this for so many years. And because my background is in law and also business consulting, it's like, I've just, I've, it's like this puzzle for me. Alignment is like a puzzle. It's like, how can we figure it out? So the person can be more aligned in their lives because everyone wants to be more aligned in their lives. What does alignment mean? Alignment means that you are energetically allowing the energy from source. You're connected to source on a conscious level. You understand the tools on how to allow the energy to move through your body. And you also have the boundaries so you're not getting sucked on by other people. Most people have like a couple of these factors, but they don't have a lot of people don't have all of them, which is understanding your connection to source, having the tools to connect. And this can be whatever permission slip works for you. Uh, so it's just allowing the energy to move through your body. And then being able to consciously take in that energy and use that for accomplishing your soul mission, right? And then the last part, which is really important that a lot of people have a very hard time with, is understanding how to play this game of life with other people and have the boundaries so you are honoring yourself first and you're honoring, honoring your energy so that it can keep flowing and you're not letting other people suck on your energy, basically. Um, and so this is where I'm coming to you today. This is a little, a little, like in all of my podcasts, like vibrationally, this is what I'm calling in for you is that you're able to be more in alignment. Everyone wants to be in alignment in their lives because it feels so good on a body level, on an intellectual level, it feels clear on an energetic level. It just feels so empowering. You have so much energy and you're just ready to go and do your mission. So this is what my podcasts are for all of you is this invitation and this activation for you to be more in alignment in your life. And one way that I'm going to bring up today is talking about taking a hard look, which is the masculine energy. It doesn't matter if you're a man, woman, other, taking a very hard and direct look at your life and asking yourself, what is not in alignment? So this could be just before you take any action, before you get overwhelmed, I would just sit, sit and do a little meditation, maybe do some breath work. You can reach out to me and I'll share my favorite YouTube free breath work sessions that you can do. Uh, so basically get yourself in your body, get yourself grounded and clear. Get out a piece of paper or your computer and your notepad and just write down super honestly, like let's just be real here super honestly, where am I not in alignment in my life? This can be, you can look at this from the perspective of physically. So do I need to exercise more? Do I need to move my body? Do I need to look at some things in my body? Do I need to eat healthier? Do I need, you know, so like, what is my, what is my pleasure suit? What does my physical body suit need? in order to be more in alignment? What do I need to do to take care of him, her, they? What do I need to do? And just write it down. You don't need to do it right there in the moment. You don't need to commit to changing. Just write it down. It's very powerful for us to allow ourselves to be in the conscious knowingness of what we need in order to be in alignment. It is so fucking powerful. So then you can look at it from an emotional standpoint. What do I need emotionally in order to be more in alignment? Do I need to love myself more? Do I need to have better boundaries? Do I need more connection emotionally with the people I love? Do I need more soul family around who are understanding and are on the same spiritual path as me? So emotionally, what do I need in order to feel nourished in my life? Do I need more space to be alone in nature and silence so that I can connect to source? Like So this is more from an emotional standpoint. And then intellectually, what do I need? 
Um, do I need to be reading? Do I need to be very careful on what social media I'm taking in? Because the more that you're giving your energy to the fear that is happening in the world, the war, the banks crumbling, all of these things are valid things. They are all happening. Do you need to give it your energy? No. Unless it's right in front of you and you need to handle it. This is something that we talk about a lot on the island here is when COVID was happening, of course, we all were worried for our families. But here on the island, they closed the island and we didn't have COVID on the island for the first year and a half that it, the, the whole world was dealing with it. So if you put your phone away, COVID didn't exist. And there wasn't anything we could do to help people who were dealing with COVID. The best thing that we could do in that situation was actually to hold a very high vibration and to be in our joy and to be in the knowingness that it was all working out best case scenario for everyone we loved. And this is what we did. I spent a lot of time during COVID just not on my phone and just not looking at it because it the only thing it was doing was putting me in fear, which was disempowering me because I was so dis dismobilized. I wasn't able to put the energy into the things that I need to do in order to make the world a better place. And this is what's happening behind the scenes energetically with a lot of these fear-based things about the economy, about the war, whatever crisis is happening, whatever you see on, on especially on the news is orchestrated to create fear in your body in order for you to be disempowered and to not be able to put this energy into positive things, into beautiful things that will actually change the world. Because every single one of you is so powerful and has so much opportunity to literally change the whole world through your vibration and through your physical output that you do in the world based on a positive vibration, based on a being in the knowingness and choosing the light. And understanding that this is a spiritual warfare that we are dealing with. This is a mental warfare. So back to our journal, back to writing down. Do I need to disconnect from certain intellectual stimuli that is disempowering me and putting me in fear? Is Am I taking in information? Or, or maybe a better question. Where am I taking in information that is putting me in fear? So we're talking about, the. I talked in my last podcast about being above or below the long a line of emotional stability. So this is a line of emotional stability when you're taking in information. This can also be on an emotional level with people you're hanging out with. If they are putting you above the line and you're feeling more empowered, you're feeling more connected to source, you're feeling like you have more energy, this is above the line. We want more people like that in our life. We want more information like that coming into our life. We want to feel more connected to source and feeling more in our power and having more energy. Ah, <sighs> take a deep breath on that one. <laughs> if you're taking in information or hanging out with people who are sharing information that is putting you below the line emotionally, intellectually, that's putting like psychically, spiritually, that's putting you in fear. I have had this with a lot of friends. I've had to make boundaries where I say, I would love to hang out with you, but I cannot spend my energy with you complaining about everything and worrying about everything that's happening. If we're sitting down and we're trying to figure out a situation in order to create the best possible outcome, amazing. If you need co-regulation and you need a positive feedback loop of someone who cares about you, amazing. I'm here for all of it. If you want to sit and wallow about what's happening in the world and add to the fear that is already taking over the world, I don't have energy for that. I only have energy to put and focus my energy because I understand that my words our spells, my words carry energetic weight, and also my energy, whatever I focus on, expands. This is why each one of us is so powerful energetically, because if all of us is focusing on the war, and we're putting all of this energy into fear, this is what's going to expand in the world, this is what's going to get bigger. If all of us are putting our energy to creating a better earth that is more peaceful and grounded and connected to nature and taking care of mama earth, then that is what's going to manifest. So this is what I'm saying is you need to set boundaries and you need to be very careful on where you're putting your energy. And then another thing, so that's intellectual, emotional, phys physical. The next one is spiritual and energetic. This is really everything. Uh, the rest of it's kind of like the things on top that show you what's happening on the baseline. But basically like where can I grow 
where do I need to be more in alignment on an, <laughs> on an energetic level? The reason why this is a separate category is because a lot of times we can feel intuitively that something energetically is off, but we can't, we haven't come to the conscious knowingness of which box to put it in, you know, of the other ones, which is like, you know, physical, intellectual, or emotional, but we can just feel like energetically hanging out with this person, I come home and I feel more depleted. This is out of alignment. This is out of alignment with who I am. This is my belief systems, you know, all of these things. If I'm hanging out with someone and I come home and I have more energy and I'm super inspired to create beautiful things in the world, this is in alignment. This is supporting who we are and our mission in the world. So I would look at people, situations, your job, what's happening in the world, and ask yourself from an energetic standpoint, does receiving this information, hanging out with this person, spending my energy in any way in any of these things make me feel more empowered and have more energy or more disempowered and have less energy? If you're feeling more energy and more empowered to go and be the person, your authentic self in the world, then this is in alignment. If you're feeling disempowered and that you just want to hide or you know that you want to make yourself less than or fall in line with what's happening in the world, then this is out of alignment. This is not where you're meant to be in the timeline. The thing that people keep forgetting because they want to distract us. And I use the word they, but I'm not here to put fear. I'm just saying this is a spiritual, this is a spiritual game we're playing. Let's put it in the form of game. This is less scary than someone's out to get us. But your soul chose to come down here and play a part in this beautiful spiritual game that's happening right now in the timeline. And there are so many beings and so many extraterrestrials and so many whatever everything you want to talk about that's in spirit everyone's watching us because and i'm not going to go into why but from a, a lot of different perspectives what happens on this planet right now affects the whole universe energetically so each one of us knew this before we came in before we choose chose to forget because part of the game is forgetting that it's a game because the whole point is not what you actually <coughs> everyone wants to focus on what you're actually doing like physically but the whole point of this game is who you choose to be vibrationally and what you choose to believe. Do you choose to believe that you are a sovereign being and that you are here and you can accomplish anything in the world and you choose the light and you are here for unconditional love and peace and unity and connection and no, being in that knowingness, knowing that we are all connected and that the earth is part of us and we are nature and so therefore, all of your actions based on that vibration is in alignment. So it comes first from a vibrational alignment. And this is why most of my podcasts are not about go do this thing. Do that. It's like you need to slow down and look at yourself. You need to really get honest with yourself. And this is from a very beautiful feminine high priestess energy that I'm saying this, knowing that you are loved and wanted and worthy and we need you for this mission, for this game that we're playing. We need you to be awake and we, we need you to really be in your power and being in your power means being in alignment and being your authentic self and having boundaries with your energy. Because if you don't have boundaries, it doesn't matter how much you're you're, you are your authentic self. When you're your authentic self, you're getting the most amount of energy coming down from source pouring through you. If you do not have boundaries with that and speak up for your boundaries and be in your needs, like speak up for your needs, you are not able to protect this energy. And so other people are just going to suck on it. <laughs> you're just going to be like moving about back and forth and whoever you're around, they're just going to use you for whatever they think is viable and whatever they think is beneficial. If you have boundaries you're going to be like, no, thank you. I know my energy is yummy and juicy. I know who I am in this game. I know that vibrationally I'm here to play this game and I choose to be in the light and I choose to use my vibration for beautiful things. And you are not in alignment with that. So bye. I'm going to go over here and hang out with these people who are more in alignment and understand the game that we're playing and are awake to it and are on the same mission and energetically we're all playing it together. And what I notice is a lot of people are coming together right now. Like, 
of course I can only speak from my perspective, you know, like what's happening in my world. But I really see the soul family. I put it in, I'm putting quotations when I say soul family because I feel like on the spiritual community, people are starting to use this a lot. And it's like, what does that even mean? For me, soul family is, yes, I have my outer community here on Copenhagen of like people who are waking up, dropping their bodies. I love all of them unconditionally. For me, soul family is people who are like, you know, like literally in spirit, we had a whole other timeline together and maybe probably other past lives. And this is like, we are meeting each other again in this timeline to finish the mission. And it feels fun to hang out. And we're like, we're just like vibing so hard together and also accomplishing our mission together in a way where it brings more unity to everyone who touches this situation and everyone feels really good about it and it feels really safe and it's just really, really fun. Like to me, this is soul family and I can really feel this coming. Oh, <laughs> sorry, my camera just fell over. I can really feel this happening so much in the timeline right now because people that I've met over the years and people that Faraday have met over the years, suddenly everyone's starting to meet each other, like even outside of us. And they're all starting to work on projects together and it's all related to our soul mission. This is when you know it's soul family because like you're literally here with the same soul mission and you're excited to do it and you're excited to do it together. And like more and more of us are coming together. And so like this next high season in Copenhagen is just gonna be like, wow what the fuck like so exciting ah, so alignment alignment is really 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 important um and also coming from this perspective of the fact that every person situation and life event is giving us the opportunity to understand where we can understand ourselves deeper uncover negative beliefs and grow as a person. So like every single situation, if we allow it, of course, we can choose to be the victim and say things are happening to us, but actually life is happening through us. And, and what does that mean? That means that, sorry, my camera is doing weird things. Um, that means that life's happening through us in the sense that like everything that's happening externally in this game of life, this is the way I like to look at it, and I really believe this is accurate. Everything is an opportunity for us to step more in our power, to be our authentic selves, to really shine our light brighter. Even if it looks on the surface that it's a negative situation, even if every single other person you talk to about the situation would tell you you should be a victim, and oh my God, poor you. There's a lot of times in my life where I on, pur on purpose have not told anyone what's going on in my life because... I know that their vibration, if enough of my friends and soul family tell me, and this is, they, they do this out of like real care for me, but they're like, oh my God, are you okay? What's wrong? What happened? That's terrible. And if everyone is saying that, it's very easy to get into the victim role. And so this is also why for many years, I never really, I didn't tell people that I grew up in a cult, that I was married when I was 18 as a virgin, like that I'd been through a lot of sexual abuse as a kid. Like I was just like, I just want to figure out who I am as my authentic self. And I just want to vibe. These things do not define me. But if I tell people these things and their vibration affects me over and over again, then it's really hard for me to figure out where is the opportunity for growth here. And so I'm not saying like I really support everyone getting co-regulation and like getting support from people who have your back. I think this is very important in the timeline, especially when we're figuring things out and we're like wanting to make sure we really are in our power. And also for me as a leader in this mission, I understand that I'm going a lot of places where no one has gone before. And I'm, I'm like literally creating new paradigms as I experience my life and the way that I choose to react to my life. And I share a lot of these in my podcast with you because I know it's such an activation. But when I'm going through it, I don't tell anyone about it. Or maybe I tell one or two people because I know they can actually hold me and they're going to support me in a way where I can become more and more of this leader that I know I'm meant to be here in the timeline. Um, like another thing that talks about in my life theme in human design, it says the cross of alignment. <coughs> and it says, I'm literally here to bring in a new society 
uh, and a new like world change and I have to do it. It says it really interesting. It's like, you have to do it in a way that is like, you have to be careful in the way that you execute this. So that you're not seen as the deserter because for me, vibrationally, I'm like, fuck this old world. Like y'all are crazy. Like whatever, like everyone who's involved in leading this, I do not support or agree with. And I kind of did this for many years. I just left California. I left, I left the States in 2014 and I just traveled. I was like, I am a citizen of the world. I'm creating a new earth. I'm going to do whatever I want. And I do not resonate with everything that's happening over there. And then I came to Copenhagen and I really built it here. Like from a energetic standpoint, from a community standpoint, I created a community and the prototype of a new society, but it wasn't like I have to, and this is when I had to step back after COVID happened because we really, we really, really made it here during COVID. Like there's so many stories that I've never shared, but basically like we had our own community garden. We were doing, we used the collective here, my three bedroom villa and no one lived here. I lived on the beach and we just used it as an event space and it was made for and by the community, completely supported by the community. So we had every single event that we could here, like kids summer camps and art classes and connection events and play parties and um, sharing circles every week. 30 of us would get together and cook dinner together. We called it Thursday family night and we would all get into this big group, men and women, and we would do a sharing round where every person got to be shared and hosted by everyone in the group. And, um, and I know I was doing all of this intuitively, like without understanding that this, what I realized later is a lot of this stuff already exists in eco villages that have been built. Um, like for instance, the sharing that we did was now they, they, there's a word for this now it's called community council where you like get together and you share about what's happening in the community and you really look at it together and like support each other. But this was all like, I would just meditate all the time and I was just getting the downloads and I was making it, you know, and th there's a lot more things that were in the works and then COVID opened and a lot of the people I'd built it with just left and just kept like the energy wasn't contained anymore and people didn't realize how important it is. It's like, I see a lot of times 10 years ahead of everyone else. And, and so I'm like, I'm like, like when COVID happened, I already knew it was coming like energetically. I didn't know what it was, but I could feel the energy in the world and something was about to happen. And I was like, Oh my God, I need to travel as much as I can before the whole world locks down. And I did, I traveled a lot in 2020 before I went to almost all the, all the continents and traveled to nine countries, um, from January to March of 2020 and got back to Thailand two days before the country locked down because I was like, I want to see everything because I know the next phase, I just need to stay. And for me, I'm here to build this new earth community. And I it's like I'm reacting to what's happening in the future that all of you are not aware of yet. But I can feel it energetically and my body and my psyche is already responding to it. And this is something that a lot of people, when you start understanding more of what's about to happen in the world, you start understanding why eco villages are really important and why having a community that is connected, even if it's just online, is so important because it's all vibrational and also it's going to start affecting us physically very soon. And it's all opportunities for connection and positivity and creating this now, we call it new earth. Some people call it now earth because it's like, it's happening now. Um, whatever you want to call it, it's happening. And each one of us gets this opportunity to choose which timeline we want to be on. And I, I just remember, like sometimes I look at like, people when they come to Copenhagen or not because I really view Copenhagen as like this opportunity for people to really step in their power it's like this incubator here for people to decide like which timeline they want to be on and I had a really close friend of mine who came in 2022 and we had a really amazing time we vibed so hard he's um and he was like I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna clean up my life financially and my job and I'm gonna organize everything and I'm gonna move back and then he bought his flight and then the war broke out and he was like, I feel like I need to stay home. I feel like I should just focus on this stuff. I feel I'm in fear. Basically, I, I'm in fear. I'm in fear. And I honor this. I'm not knocking this. Everyone's allowed their timeline. But pe what I'm saying is everyone's choosing their timeline because now I talk to him and he's like, there's no reason for me that I needed to stay. I was just scared. 
And, but now he like gave up this really great job that he could have had remotely and lived out here and had very big financial abundance. And now he's, it's almost like he went backwards energetically. And this is what I'm saying is like, everyone's choosing the timeline they want to be on. Like, are you going to make decisions based on the energy of connection and love and abundance and like trust, trust in the universe that it's all working out? Or are you going to make decisions based on fear? and disconnection and worry that things are not working out. This is why a lot of spiritual leaders right now are encouraging people to not look at conspiracy theories because when you're so connected to source and you're getting the downloads, you don't need, of course it's interesting to look at stuff and, and, and like research it, but if you're just basing a conspiracy theory, like so basically facts that you can't validate but they're on purpose sparking fear in you, this is being done to disempower you. So if you want to go down a research hole and like decide for yourself whether this is true or not, fine. Great. Have fun. But if you are choosing to consume information that is on purpose made and distributed to cause a negative reaction and to disempower you, why the fuck are you doing that? Why are you giving your power away, babe? Like, don't do that. Don't do that. There's no need for that. It's not helping anyone. Well, it's not helping anyone in our new earth. And we need all of us to be together and be fully in our power. Um, so I wanted to give you an example of playing the game in a way where you're really fully stepping in your power. Um, so I told you how I came back from traveling all over the world and like right when COVID happened right and when I was coming back I reconnected in South Africa with my boyfriend at the time and you know we, we were going through a lot and we kind of like we were trying to decide if it was meant to be for us to stay together so we took some mushrooms um, in South Africa and nature and it was really beautiful and we realized on the mushroom trip we are not meant to be together we're meant to be friends but like we are not each other's person you know and of course, for me, this was really sad because I am one for love and I'm always like willing to put so much energy into a relationship. And I was just like, I felt like at that moment I was actually getting tired of like giving my heart to people and just unabashedly like giving my love and care and gentleness and just feeling like it wasn't landing, <laughs> you know, like it wasn't being received and like coming back. Uh, but anyways, so we came, but then... COVID just got crazier and crazier and we were supposed to be in South Africa for two months and go to Africa Burn, already had our camp, like we were just like, let's just have fun for these last two months and then we figure it out after that. But then COVID came into South Africa and it was really intense and pe the, the government was bringing out like army trucks in the street and like pointing guns at people and telling them to get inside for curfew. It was just super, South Africa is already a really violent country and like really not safe and we were foreigners and white people. Uh, which in that country can cause a lot of, there's a lot of things I'm not going to go into about South Africa. I fucking love South Africa. I feel a very big soul connection to it. And also it was not a place I wanted to live during lockdown. So most of our friends were on Copenhagen and we came back to Copenhagen. And on the plane coming here, I put on Facebook like, hey, does anyone know of a place for us to stay because we're coming and I could feel that the country was about to lock down. Like I was like, I need to find a home now because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We got on one of the last planes back into Thailand and a friend of mine wrote back. I knew her from Chiang Mai for many years and I, she wrote back, come stay with me in my house. I have this villa on the beach in Sholaklom. I rented it for my birthday last month and then I think I'm just going to stay because it feels like something's about to happen in the world. And I have the master bedroom, which like is this huge bedroom with a private bathroom that opens the doors to the pool, which opens to the sea, like, like right on the beach. And I was like, yes, fuck yes. So, um, my boyfriend who at the time, his name's Rowan, Rowan and I went there and we, we stayed with her and it was me, him in one bedroom. And then her, another woman, and then her best friend from London was coming for a birthday and ended up staying. So there was two, four, there was five of us in the house. No, I think there was actually one more woman. So there was six of us in the house. And we had a maid that came six days a week to cook and clean for us. 
and the country locked down two days later. So we were like set. We were like right on the beach. Everything was provided for. She even did our laundry. I had a remote job at the time working, <laughs> like helping people transition their teams to remote. Like what was I doing? But it's just funny past lives things. Uh, so we were all working remotely and doing our stuff. Anyways, um, the the girl that invited me into the house, who was my friend, her name is Amanda, um, she was 10 years older than my boyfriend and I. And so like we were 30 and she was 40. And um, it became very apparent. And so, and also Rwanda and I were in an open relationship and we hadn't told everyone in the house. That was barking. We hadn't told everyone in the house that we were breaking up. So, but anyways, the point is, is like, I could tell that Amanda liked Ruan and I told her, I told both of them, like, I'm super open, especially at the time I was like, free love everywhere. I just said to them, I was like, if you guys want to be together, just be together, like go have fun. But you know, like we're all living together. So please like honor and make me feel safe. And so they went and had a fun night <laughs> and, um, and then what ended up happening after that was super interesting because it was like in my in my imagination we're all living together so we're all like single individuals just like trying to figure it out and afros does this thing when the cleaners come every single week where she acts like she's dying (laughs) and it's the same cleaners and they're like the nicest people ever and she just has to do her little barky thing um but basically in my mind it was like they were going to sleep together and then we were all just going to vibe, you know, like it wasn't going to be this, it was going to be creating more connection and more pleasure and more fun. So for me, I was like really excited for it. And also I was just kind of surrendered. I'm like, if this is like, I can see things so clearly ahead of time. So I was like, this is already going to play out. So I might as well create a situation where I feel safe in it playing out and where we're all on the same page and we're creating more connection. Anyways, what ended up happening was they decided to create a secret relationship outside of me and kind of like date each other in the house while we're all in lockdown together. It was all very weird and super uncomfortable energetically for myself and everyone else who was living in the house. Just created like shit tons of drama. And it got to the point where... (laughs) Uh, I just asked them, I was like, what's going on? Like, I thought we were all in this together. Like, why do I feel cut out energetically? And then um, they came to me collectively, Ruan and Amanda, and they just, they, they asked me to move out of the house. And I was like, what? (laughs) You know, like, at first I said to Ruan, I was like, I'm the one who brought you into the situation. Like, shouldn't you move out of the house? And then I realized, oh, it's because they want to be together and they decided that they no longer wanted me in the situation because I was whatever, fucking with their flow or something or making them feel bad. I didn't really understand all of it at the time. I just was like suddenly being presented with the idea that I need to leave. And this is during full lockdown when it was actually illegal on the island to move because they were um, getting everyone's passports in case someone got a COVID case so they could like track you. Um, so I, and I had just got here and I didn't really even know like where to move or what to do. And one of my best friends in the whole world, Isa, she had a place like nearby and she just said, babe, I got it. I got a place that has two bedrooms because I want to be there for women. (laughs) And I never thought you were going to be one of them, but you are the first woman that I want to be there for and empower. So come stay with me. And I was just like, okay, so I'm going to go stay with her. And then after that is when I started to really allow myself to understand what happened in the situation. And I, and then like, you know, this Amanda woman, she was going around to all of our group of friends telling them I have a new lover and he's amazing in bed. And this is like, we have a very small group of friends. It's locked down. Everyone knows every, everyone. And so everyone in the group was trying to come to me and tell me basically that you should be a victim. Like you got fucked over energetically and in many ways, like sisterhood wise, all the things. And I was just like, no, I can. Well, I mean, at first, of course, I cried for like days and I was just really upset. And then I remembered right before I came to the right before I met up with with Rowan in South Africa, I was in New York And I was at a birthday party of a friend's. Like, it was like the last birthday party, the last party weekend, last weekend parties were allowed before New York City lockdown. 
And one of my friends had this beautiful co-living space that was like three floors in Bushwick. And we did this amazing party for three floors. It was like the most epic New York City party ever. And went all night long. There's so many things I could say. It was like very Burning Man style and really, really, really beautiful. But anyways, in that party, a woman gave me a tarot reading and I asked her to give me a reading about my relationship because I could feel, again, I can feel everything coming. So I could feel that something was coming and she pulled cards and she said, something's going to happen. So I didn't remember this until after I moved out, just so you know, but she said, something's going to happen between you and him where you are going to want to blame him and you're going to want to make yourself the victim and everything on the surface is going to is going to feed into this everything in the situation is going to feed into this but you have the opportunity here to believe so this is what she said to me and I was just like yeah whatever I'm gonna choose my mental mind it's all gonna work out but she was just like you need to believe that everything happens for you and everything's working out for you and step out of the victim role because that's actually disempowering you. And I'm like, where is this woman coming from? She just like really, she really gave it to me <laughs> in this tarot reading. And I didn't understand any of it until I had moved out and I was sitting on Issa's balcony crying and I was just like, oh fuck, this is what she meant. And she said, you can choose to be the victim or you can choose to have the situation spark you to become the woman that you're meant to be in the timeline. She didn't use all of those words, but this is like what I'm channeling right now is what she said. She basically said those things. And uh, so I'm sitting there like crying on Issa's balcony in the hammock. And I'm just like, no, fuck this. I'm not going to give my power away. I'm not going to let them make me feel like the victim because this is actually energetically what this woman, I felt like Ruan just, didn't want to be with me anymore but he didn't know how to get out of it and then this was like easy pussy uh because I knew that he didn't want to be with an older woman like that's not he was in a mode where he was looking for his wife and like the next woman he ended up dating is the woman he married and has two kids with now but this was like an easy situation to get out of the relationship with me in a way where he didn't really have to deal with it in a mature way uh but with her she was like really feeding off the fact that she got my boyfriend or what she perceived as like she got a place of power of being and this happens to me a lot when you're a very powerful woman in the timeline people think that whoever you're with is like it's like they suddenly because whoever man I date suddenly all of the women around think they're like the shiniest person ever and the most amazing because they're like well if Brittany thinks they're amazing and she vouches for them it's like the biggest social proof to date me and so and also because of who I am, I don't let things fly, you know, like I really embody the men around me and I hold them to a very high standard. And so they do grow into these amazing men. You know, I have this joke that like all of the men that I've dated, the next person that they're with, like seriously, they marry or like this is their long term partner. And this has happened in almost all of my relationships with the men that I've dated over the years. Like it's like the next person because through the situation with me, the high priestess, it's like the biggest form of spiritual and embodiment awakening. And they become this, like these amazing men. Anyways, going on a tangent there, but I, going back to the story, I realized that I could have allowed this woman to make me feel like a victim. I could allow my community to make me feel like a victim. This is what I'm talking about, about sometimes I don't share what's going on because I'm in the process of transforming that shit into the most powerful thing for myself. And a lot of times other people have not caught up in order to give me a reflection of me staying in my power and becoming more and more of this leader that I know that I am. It's like when we're creating a new society, it's all new rules, not rules, but all new guidelines, all new energies, all new ways of relating to each other. It's all energy. And in today's world, it's very binary. It's very black and white. It's like this thing happened. You cheated on this person. So that thing happens. You're a bad. It's like it's all in the physical world. And I understand that this now earth, this new earth that we're creating is all energy. And it's all how much that we can be in the knowingness. So anyways, I had this like very stubborn. I'm also very stubborn. So all my Scorpio energy, like, yes, death, rebirth, 
let's go what what can we learn so i took out uh i had this like yellow legal notepad you know like where you could like flip it from the bottom up like what they have in law firms and i was just like what am i learning out of the situation what can i take away how can i choose to be more in alignment and i just wrote pages and pages of like yep i realize i do not prefer this i do not prefer that i prefer sisterhood i am always going to put women first if i'm ever in an open relationship i'm always going to connect to the woman and make her feel safe because this is where it's fucking at like i just really learned so much and also i understood my boundaries more i understood like Because I kind of was just letting them dictate what happened and making me, there was like a week or two in the house where I could feel the energy building up and I could feel that something was going on. Like I would lay down for a nap and then like Rowan and Amanda would disappear when I wake up and, you know, they'd be in her room doing who's, who knows what. And I was, could just feel this uncomfortableness and I wasn't speaking up early in the moment. I just let it build because I was yeah, not speaking up for my needs. So I learned these lessons. Like I just learned, learned, learned so much. And it was really beautiful. And then I just let go. I just let go and trusted the universe. I was like, the situation's going to play out however it needs to play out, but I'm staying in my fucking power. I got my own place. I got my own bungalow right next to Isa's. And then her and I manifested a villa to live on. And we brought all of our we have a we had a women's circle on the island with eight of us and we promised each other that we would meet for at least four weeks in a row and we ended up meeting for four months in a row so we wanted like the commitment we made at the beginning was we would all meet each other once a week for a month we ended up meeting consecutively all of us for four months in a row before someone you know and then we kept meeting but like sometimes people couldn't come or whatever but like for for four months like the eight of us were just like this pack of like women and we were from all different ages ethnicities backgrounds spiritual awakenings it didn't matter we were just like we were in it and we were witnessing each other's story and four of us me and Isa, and two more of this women from the women's circle we all lived in a villa together and then we hosted tons of parties and we just like lived the high life here on the island during the lockdown and just had the best fucking time. And that was like one of the first bases of the community. We would always be having community over, always doing art and music. And it was so beautiful. And it was like, I was so grateful that I wasn't dating Ruan anymore and like living this super boring life with him. Uh, that was out of alignment because suddenly I was just snapped back into alignment because I chose to stay in my power. I chose to learn the lesson and not choose and didn't choose to be the victim. And then I had so much energy and I could follow the synchronicity. And I really spent a lot of time on the island like playing and just going to Wainam and taking a ton of acid with my friends and getting the downloads. And I really believe that play is one of the biggest ways that we can be connected to source if we choose to do it in a way that is mindful and grounded. (sighs) Okay, so that's my story. Um, I wrote some notes, I'm just looking at them. Um, Yeah, something I wanted to say is right after the situation with that I just shared about I um I ended up meeting a a couple on the island like we it was like you weren't supposed to meet in groups of more than two like they had like really hard lockdown rules here even though we didn't have COVID on the island and so like people were having like this little sneak secret it was like a big deal if you had like a secret party of like eight people and then Isa was like I got invited to one of these secret parties and I was like I want to come I want to come and like Dan wanted to come too our friend Dan that you've he's been on the podcast Um, and so she was like, I have to ask permission if you guys can come because they don't know you and like, you know, it's super illegal. And of course this makes it way more fun. So we got permission to come. And when I was there, the people who were hosting it were these really amazing people from Switzerland, I think like really tall. And like the guy was just like this big mountain of a bear and he's a cancer astrology wise. And we just, and there was like maybe eight or 10 people there and we were just having the best time, like smoking weed and just hanging out and vibing and like playing music and like dancing and stuff and then when I was leaving the the guy who was hosting it he gave me this really good long hug like longer than normal and I was just feeling I could feel the connection I was like ooh, 
there's something here to explore. But he was in a relationship with his his girlfriend. And I was like, no fucking way am I touching this. Like, I just came out of this situation. Anyways, he messages me a couple days later on Facebook. And again, I didn't have his contact or anything. He like found me, tracked me down and was just like, hey, I would like to go on a date with you. And I was like, you're... T-. So I had just come out of the situation where like I had just been really hurt in the sisterhood and just like openness and stuff. And I was just like, fuck this. I was like, you're dating someone. Why the fuck? I got really angry at him. I was like, why are you messaging me when you are in this um, relationship with this really amazing woman? <laughs> I was like, I was like really giving it to him. And then he said, oh, no, no, no. She, um, we're in an open relationship for like many years. And I told her about you and she gave me the approval that I could reach out to you. Like she's basically, she's fully on board and she's super cool with it. And I was like, I don't give a fuck what you say. I'm messaging her. So I like, I found her on Facebook. Like I went on his, his profile and I found her and I messaged her and I like sent her screenshots of what he said. And I was like, is this true? Because for me, the most important thing is you and I are okay. Like I've had past experiences where I've been really hurt by women in openness. And all I care about is that we as women are really in our power with everything that's happening. And she wrote me back and she was just like, wow 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 this is like this is so healing on so many levels like yes uh he did ask me and yes i gave my approval and yes we're in open relationships so like everything he said is valid and also the fact that you checked in with me first and you wanted to create safety for me she was like i've never had a woman do this and i'm realizing how amazing this is like this is really this is really healing for me and i'm like (laughs) i calmed down i took some breaths i'm like okay (sighs) <sighs> he's not disempowering her, his, his girlfriend. Cause I was just like, are all men like this? Are they all just trying to get pussy? Um, and um, I was like, I'm not going to be one of those women. That's like taking the man away or whatever. Like, fuck that. I'm here for the sisterhood. So anyways, him and I ended up connecting and having a really beautiful like lovership. And, you know, she had a boundary where we don't wear, con- we wear condoms. Like, and I was like honoring honor, 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 because I'm here for the sisterhood. I'm here for all of it. And it felt so healing for me because there's also something I'll say is that when you're a really powerful woman, who's very embodied in her sexuality, uh, in the past, I've had a lot of experiences. Like this is mostly in my twenties where uh, when I wasn't in a relationship, some of the women around me in the community, not my close girlfriends because they knew me, but like people who didn't know me super well, they would feel threatened that I would take their boyfriend just by my energy, just by me being my vivacent sexual fairy, you know, they were feeling threatened by that. And I had a couple situations where women called me out and they were like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, like saying I'm flirting with their boyfriend and stuff. And I was like, no I'm just talking to them at a party like I do you not want so I had I had a a period of time where I like literally if someone was in a relationship I just wouldn't talk to the guy because I was so worried about hurting the sisterhood and now I realize okay this is these women's insecurities and like of course it's important to check in but also it's an energy thing and back then I wasn't aware of how much my sexual energy was just overflowing and going everywhere and I think there needs to be a balance in the middle because it was how do I put this like nowadays I understand my sexual energy and I understand if it's like reaching out energetically to hook onto someone whether I'm conscious of it or not a lot of stuff I think was happening in the past was unconscious like I didn't realize I was doing it but you also have to grow up sometimes and like take accountability and so now like I can have these amazing friendships with men and understand where the line is at like and, and not and not give the impression that I'm open sexually to them. So anyways, I'm sharing all of that because this situation was super healing where I checked in with a woman. She was like, I'm fully on board with you sharing your sexual energy with my partner. I, and I understand that you're going to honor my boundaries and not try and take him away. And I was like, oh my God, this is so fucking healing. Yes, I'm here for all of this. But for me, this was me being able to be more in my alignment because I I shared about this on Instagram this morning that like for many years of my life, I've gone back and forth between if you need to come in, baby. Can. I shared about this on my Instagram this morning, but like for many years, I was having a hard time understanding how to embody two different archetypes. One of them is the high priestess, which is a woman who's like fully in her sexual energy 
and understands how to use this to like heal the collective, heal the women around them by helping them feel safe to be in their sexual power, healing the men around by teaching them how to be a man and inspiring them to be more emotionally mature and also could be teaching them sexual things. So there's that's one archetype that is me. And this is what I usually do this now in the play parties by creating a situation where people can explore their sexuality and step more in their power sexually in the embodiment. There's also this other archetype in me that is the Queen of Cups, which is a woman who's fully embodied in her feminine, her emotions, and is also it's kind of like the wifey, you know, like someone who likes to be at home, making it cozy, taking care of her man, like and f- having this very close emotional spiritual sexual connection with one person like this is home like this is home base together you know and what I realized in all of these dynamics is that as long as I'm able to be so I personally was out of alignment for many years because I was trying to choose between one or the other like I was like dating someone and then stopping like the the guy I was dating when I first made my play parties uh, was not supportive of the play party. So I ended up just stopping hosting my play parties until him and I broke up. So I chose queen of cups and just to be with him instead of also embracing my high priestess energy. And then I went the other direction. And for like a couple of years, I was like, kind of like fuck commitment. I'm not going to allow a man to stop me from being in my high priestess energy. I'm here for the collective. I'm here to make these play parties and to be this, like this icon for sexual embodiment. I wrote that out for a while. It was great. It was fun. I had a lot of amazing loverships in that in that time period with men and really allowing myself to like heal men and and also heal women by being in, in just just vibrationally a woman who's in her power and in her joy and in her pleasure is so fucking healing and activating for all the women around her because they're like, "Oh, if she can do it, then I can do it in my own way," you know? And then with Faraday, it's been this like roller coaster back and forth of me, like he's the person I want to be the queen of cups with, you know, I love being at home with him and being cozy. He calls it Christmas vibrations and, and just now like building a life together where we are each other's person and, and our sexual dynamic is super juicy and amazing and always growing and And I, I, and with this, I had some trauma that I needed to personally process. And I'm in the middle of a very strong upward swing swing in that healing process. And I'm like really proud of myself for that and Japan. And I did Cambo the last couple of days, which is this really amazing detox. Highly recommend Cambo. Um, But all of this is me allowing myself to feel safe, to drop into this queen of cups, which is like allowing myself to feel safe, to be the wifey you know, and to like be someone's wifey and to feel like, oh, I believe a man can take the lead and I trust him. Like really, really embodying that. Cause it's one thing to like preach it from a podcast. <laughs> it's another thing to actually embody it when stressful situations come up and that are triggering and activating and blah, blah, blah. And then also realizing that I can, with Faraday especially, I can be this queen of cups and also the high priestess in the way that I coach people in the play parties and also you know, more and more, um, if I choose to, and I want to, he's super supportive of me having connections outside of our dynamic, like sexually, romantically with other people. But you know what I've realized is like when you, when someone gives you all of the freedom in the world and really supports you on it, which I love, and I'm super grateful for him, um, and does it in a way where you feel safe, like in a way where it creates more connection, um, it, it's like I have everything I want and I don't actually need anything more. Like, like if someone comes into my life and it's like divinely orchestrated that we're meant to have some sexual connection, great. But like right now I feel super fulfilled by my dynamic with Faraday and I'm growing so much in our connection and so much in my embodying these que- this queen of cups energy. And yeah, it's just, it's just, it's almost ironic to me because I've spent most of my life in monogamous relationships or open relationships where the, the guy wasn't actually okay with me being open. There was a lot of double standards happening where they wanted to sleep with women, but they didn't want me to sleep with men, whatever, whatever. But with Faraday, he's just like, I'm fully on board. 
do your thing. I know you're coming home to me. Like, I trust you. Um, let's do this together. And I'm like, wow, having this much freedom and trust and also having it happen in a way that makes me feel safe, it creates this desire in me to trust more and to drop more into my soft feminine place and to, yeah, just lean in more. And it, it's like, this is most things in life is people want to have the opportunity and the freedom to do whatever they want and choose. This is like personal sovereignty. But once they do that, then they're able to see clearly what they actually need in the situation. And a lot of times we don't actually need to go around sleeping with everyone. We just like for me, at least I just want to have the option that it's okay. And I'm not a bad person for doing it. Cause like so many people in my life have made me feel like a slut or a bad person starting with my father. That's a whole other story. Um, considering the fact that I was a virgin when I got married, but I was raised with my father calling me a slut. Okay. Anyways. So last things I'll say is I told you a lot of stories, right? So all of this is like the cliff notes in the, in the sense that cliff notes means like, this is a very short version. This is like me looking at it from a higher self perspective, looking back on the situation. Most situations are not this clear. Most situations, especially the one I've been in recently with Faraday is so fucking unclear on like what I actually need to do. What's the best for the timeline? What I need to do on my boundaries. And if you're in one of these situations, the thing I have to say is that sometimes you can understand what you would like and you can see where your higher self is getting you to go, but you have to give your body time to catch up. So I've been in a lot of situations where I can see the higher path because I can see a lot of things energetically and spiritually, but my body is like, no, 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 this doesn't feel safe. And, and I think what I'm actually realizing is it's, it's something in the middle, like, because when you do, speak up for what your body needs along the way in order to feel safe there's also growth in that and that is like it's not about jumping from this level to the next level where it's like like the 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 juicy part is actually the growing from this level it's the experiencing of how did we get there and what happened in between this vibrational point to that vibrational point so don't let yourself judge yourself that you, you can if you can see where you're you're meant to be and you're not quite there it's not about judging yourself because that's disempowering yourself and actually taking your energy away. It's about asking yourself, what does my body need right now in order to feel safe, in order to feel like it can expand into this next higher vibration? It can, it can feel like it has the energy to do the work that it's needed to get there. And this is why the beginning of this episode is really important about being in alignment. Because when you're in alignment, you have all of this energy to keep going and it feels really fun for you. Um, but yeah, I would just say, be gentle with yourself, take baby steps. Like I have this situation with my relationship with me in the gym is that I can see intellectually like me being more in shape, like physically, like I've always been skinny in my life, but I want to be strong and skinny. Like I choose to have my bones be strong and to do more weightlifting. And I get in these modes where I'm like, I can see it vibrationally I can see where I'm going I'm excited and then I push myself I'll do like three or four days in the gym at once of hard training and then I get sick because my body I didn't rest in between I didn't allow my body time to catch up like literally physically and this is I didn't even realize I was doing this until someone pointed out to me they're like like I think Faraday was say like why aren't you giving yourself a rest day why aren't you just listening to your body and so I was like okay this is what I'm gonna do so I invite all of you to do that as well and send you all lots of love and I will see you in the next episode